Now, we've gone over the entire process. I've provided you with an overview of this beam design process based on Spec F2. And we're going to take a closer look now at these pads here, which are really dependent on the unbraced length. And in particular, let's start with the case where the simpler case where the unbraced length equals zero. And what the heck do we mean by, you know, determine the plastic section modulus required using the BDR? Let me grab this portion. So when LB equals zero, I know my failure mode is yielding or fully plastic. And that means my nominal moment strength is the plastic moment Fy times Zx. And so here, if I look at LRFD, I can use the BDR to back calculate or create a required plastic section modulus. And I can solve for, I can say whatever Zx I choose, it better be greater than or equal to mu over phi Fy. This number would be a Zx required. I can do the same thing with ASD. Once I have a Zx required, I can use table 3-2. And what the heck is table 3-2? So hopefully you have the AISC manual. Please go buy one. Yay! There's my plug. I took a picture of a page of my AISC manual. Please, AISC, don't hurt me. Here, check it. This is what table 3-2 looks like. It's freaking awesome. Table 3-2 for wide flange shapes, ordered essentially by the plastic section modulus for bending about the strong axis. For 50 KSI steel, I have a bunch of shapes. They are sorted by flexural strength and groove by weight with the lightest shape in the group in bold. If I need 119, this W12 by 79, I need 119 inches cubed. But I see that if I choose a W21 by 55 instead, I'm going to get a better moment capacity, a higher plastic section modulus, and lighter. So it's like stronger, lighter, faster, better, faster, stronger. <laughs> All right. Not only do I get that information, but I also have values calculated for me for the design or the available strength for ASD and LRFD. I also have the tools I need to really construct a the that graph and and really look at there's this this MRX right here that what I just highlighted in, in orange is the elastic limit or it's the if kind of the MR for lateral torsional buckling. And then here, this BF is kind of a simplifier, helps us like do quick calculations, especially in the inelastic LTB range. And even better, I get LP and LR. I don't have to calculate those monstrous equations. I also get the moment of inertia for easy deflection checks. And I also get the shear strength of the section as well. Lots of information here. Amazing. Helps expedite so much, especially if you're doing calculations and checks by hand. So let's do an example using this table. Hey. Oh, and down here, check it. What? And resistance factors and safety factors it, when, if you need it. We're going to do an example designing flexural members. This will be a case where we have a uniformly distributed load. The dead load is 1.5 kip per foot. Just to keep things simple, we're going to say that that includes the beam weight. And then we've got a live load of 2 kip per foot. We'll say it's on simple support, so like a simply supported beam and with continuous lateral support. And that means the unbraced length is zero. And that tells us a lot about its limit state. We'll also have a maximum live load deflection. We'll say that the, the deflection, the maximum deflection due to live load has to be less than or equal to L over 360. And here is what we are, here's what the beam geometry might look like. All right, and so the dead load and live load is applied like this. The length of the beam is, we'll go with 20 feet. And what we're gonna do is with this information, we're gonna select a wide flange section uh, using LRFD requirements. So the first thing we need to do is determine the required strength. We should know by now how to analyze the simply supported beam. So here, the load only load combination I'm gonna consider is 
for LRFD, the 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. And this is going to give us five kip per foot right here. This required moment strength is WUL squared over eight. And when I plug and chug this, this is going to be 250 kip feet. And then the maximum shear is going to be WL over two. And this is going to be 50 kips from my structural analysis. And this is, this max moment occurs at mid span and the max shear occurs at the supports. And once I know that, then I'm going to determine my unbraced length. In this case, because I have continuous lateral support, my unbraced length is zero. And that means I will have the only limit state that I have to worry about is yielding. So now I can use the BDR to come up with ZX required or the plastic section modulus I need. And that just comes from this VMN greater than or equal to MU. I know my limit state is uh, yielding. And so that means my nominal moment is FY times ZX. And this ZX is going to be greater than or equal to MU over phi FY. And here, this would be 250 kip feet times 12 inches per foot divided by phi, which is 0.9 for flexure and 50 KSI. Oh, maybe I didn't mention that. But yeah, we're going to use 50 KSI steel here in this design. And this, this whatever ZX that we choose is going to be greater than 66.7 inches cubed right here and this this number right here would be this zx required and whatever we choose for our design we just want to make sure that we exceed this so now i can select a trial shape i'm going to use table 3-2 in the manual in particular for here i'm going to page 3-25 in the 16th edition of the aisc manual and i'm going to look for 66.7 inches cubed here let me go to that right here yes i have a column at least on table 3-2 i have a column of plastic section moduli right here and when i go through that group i'm looking for 66.7 or something near it i see 66.6 so that w10 by 54 is a candidate i see 69.6 that would work but i'm gonna go straight to that bolded line right here because within that group i have the largest plastic section modulus and the lightest section this w16 by 40 so i'm trying to choose an economical shape here i'm gonna go with the w16 by 40 from table 3-2 there's a lot of information there i see that zx is equal to 73 inches cubed which is greater than the 66.7 inches cubed so check okay you know i probably could have just done this without the zx i could have just done it by the moment requirement like i could have taken this 250 gone back to the table and i could have looked at this column right here i see the 250 kip feet but within that group the most efficient shape is that w16 by 40 with a 274 kip feet capacity. And so here, I could have just said, A, hey, this phi MN for this W16 by 40, this moment capacity for fully plastic is 274 kip feet, which is greater than the 250 kip feet. So I'm also okay there, yay. And some other information that I have for this W16 by 40, if I look, is this number right here. That's the moment of inertia. And this right here is the shear capacity. So this is IX, and this is the designed shear strength of the section. And, and that information is going to be useful for me as I check shear and deflection and i'll just write that down okay so for flexure my cross section is good uh, the moment strength is good now i just need to check the shear and the deflection and that just means looking at the bdr for shear is phi vn greater than or equal to vu and in this case yes i have 146 kips this is much greater than this uh, required shear strength of 50 kips so this is check okay all right and now i'm going to do a deflection check and whatever the maximum deflection is in the beam this has to be less than or equal to the limit and in this case we're doing a live load check 
So this is a L over 360 limit right here. So we're going to limit that to L over 360. The maximum deflection in a simply supported beam from table 3-22 of your manual is 5 W L to the fourth over 384 E I. And this is going to be less than or equal to L over 360 like that. Now this is a service criteria. So we're going to be using service loads. That means the loads are unfactored and this is for live load only. So this is going to be and I want to know, is this less than or equal to L over 360 over 360? If I look over here, let's see, I have a kit per foot. I'm going to get foot to the fourth. So I'm going to have like 12 inches per foot cubed to get everything into the units of inches. And now when I go ahead and I plug and chug, man, I'm going to get on this side 0.4 eight inches which is less than what's going to be on the right side which is 0.67 inches so this is also how convenient okay check okay now there's you know with the deflection just one last comment here with the deflection you know what i could have done is i could have created a criteria for the moment of inertia and i could have used this relationship to determine a requirement for ix and so that could have been is greater than or equal to and I could have said IX has to be greater than or equal to. And this would have told me that whatever I choose for my cross section, the moment of inertia has to be greater than or equal to. All right. So hopefully this provided this kind of a simple overview or first example in designing flexural members, especially when we have continuous lateral support or we know the limit state is fully plastic. All right. Hopefully this was helpful. Take it easy. Structural free.